here's a nice fiction book called Dr. Zargel's Book of Earthlets. It's by Jean Willis and Tony Ross. Dr. Zargel's Birth Book, oops, <laughs> Book of Earthlets. Jean Willis, Tony Ross. Good morning, class. Today we are going to learn about earthlets. They come in many colors, but not green. Notice the way they spelled colors there. It's a little different than we normally spell it. Sometimes there's words that can be spelled a couple of different ways. It's kind of an old way of spelling it. Next page. They have one head and only two eyes, two short tentacles with feelers on the end, and two long tentacles called leggies. So they're making up some of their own words from this uh, space alien teacher. <laughs> um, I'll let you kind of guess what feelers might be on the short tentacles and what leggies might be on the long tentacles. Kind of have to figure it out and use the picture, don't you? They have square claws, which they use to frighten off wild beasts, known as Tibbles and Marmaduke. And I'm noticing Tibbles and Marmaduke are both capitalized. So I'm thinking this must be the names of the wild beasts in the picture. I guess you can probably uh, imagine what the square claws are, can't you? Oh, next page. Earthlets grow fur on their heads, but not enough to keep them warm. <laughs> they must be wrapped in the hairdo of a sheep. That's kind of an interesting word, hairdo. It's a compound word, isn't it? It has two smaller words inside it, hair and do. I've never really thought of it as hairdo of a sheep. What do you, what do you think he's talking about there? Very old earthlings, or grannies, unravel the sheep, and with two pointed sticks, they make earthlet wrappers in blue and white and pink. So that must be a granny and she must be unraveling the sheep and making wrappers. I wonder what we call that when they do that. Does anybody recognize that? Look in the picture. What are her feet sitting on top of? I bet some of your moms or grandmothers do this very same thing. Only I don't think they call them uh, rappers. <laughs> Earthlets have no fangs at birth. For many days they drink only milk through a hole in their face. Hmm, I think we have a different word for that hole in the face, don't we? What do we call that? When they have finished the milk, they must be patted and squeezed to stop them from exploding. <laughs> I don't know if any of you have a little baby brother or sister that mom and dad pat or squeeze after they feed, but I don't think we were worried about them exploding exactly. Maybe you can figure out what they're talking about there. When they grow a fang, the parent earthling takes the egg of a hen and mangles it with a prong. Any idea what they're talking about there? Mangling an egg with a prong? I think in the picture you can see the egg in one of his tentacles and probably the prong in the other. I wonder what he's talking about when he says a prong. Can you tell? Oh my goodness, I think now we know what maybe they're talking about. Then she puts the egg mangle on a small spade and tips it into the earthlet's mouth 
nose and ears. So what's happening in that picture? What do you think's on that small spade in her hand? Is that what we call it? That thing that she's using there? I don't usually call that a spade at my house. I don't know what you call it. And I'm wondering what all that yellow stuff is in the bowl and on the earthlet's head and face and all over the wall. Can you tell? I think that maybe is the mangled up egg from the hen. Maybe some of you eat that for breakfast at your house. We just maybe call it different things. To stop them leaking, earthlets must be pulled up by the back tentacles and folded in half. <laughs> then they must be wrapped quickly in a fluffy triangle or sealed with paper and glue. <laughs> Is that what it looks like? Any of you guys that have small babies at your house? Don't, don't mom and dad kind of fold them up in half like that to put the put the paper underneath or we don't call it paper do we what do we call it maybe a diaper <laughs> yeah during the day earthlets collect the hairs of tibbles and marmaduke mud egg mangle and banana oh my goodness that's pretty gross looking look at all the hair and eggs and bananas and everything else on that little earthlet. That baby is filthy, isn't he? <laughs> Do babies at your house get dirty like that during the day? They are placed in plastic capsules with warm water and a yellow floating bird. What does that look like there? Is that what it looks like at your house when when babies are trying to get cleaned up? Yeah. And what's that yellow floating bird? <laughs> After soaking, earthlets must be dried carefully to stop them shrinking. <coughs> Excuse me. Then they are sprinkled with dust to stop them sticking to things. Well, now, I don't know if any of you get this put on your uh, babies or even on yourself after a bath. Um, what do you think they're sprinkling, that white stuff? What do you think they're sprinkling all over that little baby? <clears throat> and this uh, Professor Zargul is thinks this is to keep them from shrinking. But is that really why we put powder on babies? Hmm. Of course, he's calling it dust, but I think we all know we don't really put dust on babies after we wash them, do we? We call it powder, baby powder, right? Why do that? Yeah, we have to do that so that clothes don't stick, right? Earthlets can be recognized by their fierce cry. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that baby's upset. Can you see what happened in the picture, why he's upset? To stop them doing this, the earthling daddy picks them up and flings them into the atmosphere. Ooh, there's a big word, atmosphere. That's a pretty fancy word. Where's that daddy throwing him? Up into the what? What's another name that we might use instead of atmosphere? Then he tries to catch them. Uh oh. <laughs> I hope he doesn't always drop his baby onto the cat. <laughs> if they still cry, the earthling mummy pulls their feelers one by one and says, This little piggy went to market until the earthlet makes a hee hee noise. Okay, it says she's grabbing his feelers. Look at that picture. What do you think feelers might be? What do you think Dr. Zargul is talking about? 
when he she says he says she pulls the feelers and then says this little piggy went to market what word would we use If they still cry, they are sent to a place called Betty Buys. <laughs> this is a swinging box with a soft lining in which there lives a small bear called Teddy. <laughs> How many of you have a small bear named Teddy living in your uh, bed? That is the end of today's lesson. If you are all very good and quiet, we are going to put our disguises on and visit planet Earth to see some real Earthlets. Oh wow, look, they're going to go on a field trip. Can you see what the, the, uh, the little aliens are putting on for disguises? What are they dressing up as? Look down on the ground at the different parts of the disguise. <laughs> the spaceship leaves in five minutes. Oh my goodness. Look at, they all look the same, don't they? And they're all headed to Earth to see baby Earthlets and learn more about them. <laughs> Here's the back of the book. I usually like to look at the back of the book before I read to kind of see what the book is about. You might have done that too. You can see Professor Zargle there telling his class that they're going to learn about Earthlets. He's a, it says he's a friendly alien teacher. <laughs> we had to use some inference as we read this book, boys and girls because some of the words Dr. Zargle uses didn't really match with the words that we used. So you might want to go back through the story and see if you can figure out um, the words that we would use to go with some of the words that he used with his class. Great job.